Hello students, how are you? How are you feeling today? Uh, I wish to take this opportunity to welcome you to Kibabi University. I wish also to congratulate you for having made it to the university. It is not an easy task, we are aware. And so for you to make it and to join us, I want to say congratulations to each one of you. You have all worked hard for you to be able to reach here. Uh, this mom at this moment, I am going to talk about counseling as a service in Kibabi University. So first, before I proceed, let me introduce myself so that you are able to know me. So my name is Susan Adina, a student counselor in this institution. Uh, my main task in this institution is to be able to take care of your psychological well-being. Uh, you're joining in as new people in the institution. You are coming into Probably for some of you, a very new experience in life. There are a number of uh, life experiences that you're going to face here. And that's why we exist in this university as a counseling section, so that we can be able to support you in any issue that could be able to come in your life that could hinder you from achieving your academic ex excellence. One thing that I would like to emphasize is the fact that the first thing that has brought you in this institution is your academic performance. So everyone in this institution will be looking at your academic performance. Mm -hmm. And that's how we come in as a counseling section so that we may be able to support you to be able to achieve your goals as far as your academic excellence is concerned. I wish to clarify that counseling is a section under Students Affairs Department, which is headed by the Dean. I'm sure the Dean ha has already mentioned it to you or she will mention it. So much of our interactions will be interacting with you under the Students Affairs Department. So for today and for this session, allow me to call you ladies and gentlemen. I know you've just come from high school and you are called, you've been called maybe or referred to as girls and boys. But in this session, I would want to refer to you as ladies and gentlemen. Why would I want to refer to you as ladies and gentlemen? Because you are now coming to an institution of higher learning. We look forward to seeing you transform from a high school student to a high caliber citizen that has been molded by Kibabi University. We have a, a structure that guides us within that section. We have two arms within the section. We have the counselors who are employed by the university. We are referred to as student counselors, and we are two of us, myself, Susan Adina, in charge of counseling. And then I have, we, I work with the Reverend Joseph Chumbe Butali, who is an assistant student counselor. Within the university, when you will join us physically, you will find as in our offices are located in Hostel 3, within the hostel, so we are located in Hostel 3. One of our offices is on ground floor, on the left wing of Hostel 3, where Reverend Chube uh, stays. And then my office is situated still in Hostel 3, first floor, the same wing. That is where you'll always find us in the meantime, unless our location is changed. Then we have the other arm, which is which comprises of peer counselors. So the peer counselors arm is an, is an arm that composes of students, your peers within the universities running right from first year 
to fourth year. They are normally trained by the university and equipped with some important skills so that they could be the link between us, our office, and students. The purpose of having peer counselors is because they are within the institution, they, they are with you in class, they mingle with you in various places, and so they would be easy, it would be easier many times for you to be able to access them in case you need some psychological support from the counseling office. So we have trained them to, and they have skills that they can be able to support you with, and then they will be able to guide you according so that you can be able to reach us and be able to get professional services. At the end of this, I'll be able to give you some numbers, some telephone numbers, both for peer counselors representatives and our numbers for counselors, so that you can be able to reach us even on phone once you are registered as a student here. I'm aware that there are so many myths and misconceptions out there about counseling. One of the major ones is normally uh, as a myth that counseling is for sick people or for people who have problems. I would like to communicate with you on that matter and be able to give you the facts and the fact that counseling is not for sick people, it's not for problematic people, but it is aimed to be able to be a support system for you so that in any time or at any event when you feel that a situation is beyond your control, you are, not, you are not managing it as you would want to do, or you are not achieving your goals as you would want to achieve because of one situation or another, that's when counseling comes in so that we could be the ear and the second mind that could help you to think through your situation and be able to find a better and healthy solution to the situation. It could be just even you are admitted in a course here and you feel like you do not want to pursue that course, you would want to change the course and you don't know what to do. If you are not able to reach the lecturers to advise you, we are available, we can be able to guide you and refer you to the proper or appropriate offices so that you can be able to make appropriate um, decisions. Another area that is, I could give as an example is relationships. When well, students join the university, there are a lot of issues related to relationships because you're moving into another phase of your life. And sometimes decision making is quite a challenge or some experiences within those relationships could be a challenge. You don't need to wait until it's too late for one to commit suicide or drop out of school or something. We encourage that you come to us in our office in good time. We'll be able to reason with you. For us as an office, we do not judge anybody. We do not judge anything. Ours is to support you to be able to negotiate those situations in life and be able to emerge the best person that you could ever be in life. That's why we are here. So I always tell first year students that we, at the counseling office, we are the mother and the father that is away from you while you are in school. Anytime you need someone to speak to like a mother, someone that can listen to you and understand you, that's where we are here. Always feel free to come. So when you come to the institution, you'll find us here. If you are going to be learning from outside, we will connect with you online so that you can still be able to communicate with us in case you're facing any challenge that is hindering the performance, or rather your academic performance in this institution. In line with the statement that I made that there are myths and misconceptions about counseling, I would just like to mention a few benefits from counseling that could encourage you to come and seek our services. Remember, counseling out there is expensive. It's not a cheap issue if you are to get counseling services out there. But we are here as counselors in the counseling section. We are employed because of you. We are here to support and to work with you. So it is easier for you to seek the service and be able to derive maximum benefits, benefit from the, uh, the advantages that counseling could give you. Once you come to the university, the level of engagement as far as academics is concerned, is different. There's so much that you need to do, and there's a likelihood that you could develop stress for various reasons. The assignments could be tough, 
or something. So many things could happen within the institution that could cause you stress. When you seek counseling services, we are able to help you and support you and work with you and uh, help you to relieve the stress so that you can continue to negotiate within the education system. There are issues of relationships and we have so many levels of relationships that could give you challenges. And um, when you come to counseling, you'll be able to learn interpersonal skills. You'll be able to learn quite a number of skills that would enable you to relate with people effectively. And that will give you an easier stay in this university. So there are so many benefits when you join the institution or as we connect online, we'll continue sharing with you a lot about counseling services. But just know that there's so much benefit that you will derive from counseling when you join this institution. There's so much advantage that you will gain from counseling when you join this institution. We will endeavor to be your friends, we'll endeavor to be close to you, and we'll endeavor to support you maximally so that you may be able to be the best kind of citizen, the best kind of person, the best kind of student that you could be. Don't fear us, move close to us. As I've told you, we are two counselors. I am the female, there is a male counselor, and both of us are always there and will always be there to take care of you. So lastly, as I had indicated, I would now want to give you our contact telephone numbers that you can be able to reach us quickly when you, are, you need our help. I will give you the telephone numbers for the two student counselors so that you can be assisted quickly. So the first contact telephone is for Susan Adina. That's me. The number is appearing on the screen. Contact telephone is for the assistant student counselor. Reverend Joseph Chumbe Butali. The number is appearing on the screen. Kindly take those numbers. You never just know when you need them. We are on call day and night in case you need anything or something is urgent. But we work 8 to 5 p.m. official hours. So again, as I conclude, let me say I'm excited to have new children joining my family. As I said, I'm the mother. The father, you'll see him when you join us. So as the mother, I'm happy. New children are joining us, and we will always be there to take care of you. And from today, I've said, start thinking like a lady, start thinking like a gentleman. There's so much that we'll talk. We normally have students' forums where we'll invite you and we discuss various issues touching on the lives of students. So we will either do them physically or online, but we'll keep talking about different life issues that could be challenging you. And we'll also be looking forward to you giving us or telling us some of the areas that you'd like us to talk generally to students so that together we can be able to share our challenges, empower each other and grow together as a family. Thank you for choosing Kibabi University. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to Kibabi University. Goodbye. See you online or physically. Well, my name is Tom Amwanzo, in charge of games and sports Kibabi University. Today, I'll take you through the requirements of a student in games and sports in Kibabi. Kibabi University has previously performed very well in sports, and as we are talking, we have a student going to the Olympics. I would like to say the Games and Sports Department is housed in the Dean of Students' Office. And the Dean of Students is found in the Academic and Students' Affairs Division. Our offices are found in the pavilion. We have three staff members whom I will introduce later. Our mandate as a department is to provide students with an opportunity to participate in games for health, recreation, and competition. 
The games department has three members. The games tutor, the coach, and the games attendant. In Kibambi, we compete in four levels of competition. We compete in the International Universities Championships under the umbrella of FISU. Here, we compete amongst universities in the world. We also have African University Championship. Christian or called FASU. Here we compete among universities in Africa. We also have East African University Championship. Here we compete amongst universities in East Africa. In Kenya, we compete under the umbrella of KUSA, Kenya University Sports Association. Here we compete amongst universities in Kenya and in Kenya, the championships are divided into conferences. We have the Western Conference, Nairobi Conference, Central Conference, and the Mombasa Conference. In Western Kenya, we compete amongst nine universities, that is Kibabi University, Masinde Muliro University, Masena University, Rongo University, Jaramogi Obingo Odinga University, Kapianga University. In the university, we also organized internal championships referred to as university intramurals. In this championship, students are given an opportunity to compete amongst themselves, either interfaculties, interiors, or interdepartments. We also have a festival, cultural week festival, where students compete in various games starting from athletics, ball games, tug of war, bodybuilding, and other festival activities. It is important at this level for me to inform you the kind of games that we offer in Kibak. Ball games. We have basketball, men and women. Volleyball, men and women. Soccer, men and women. Hockey, men and women. Handball, men and women. We also have martial arts, taekwondo, karate, and boxing. We also have athletics. In athletics, we have road races, track and field, walking race, and cross country. The road races we have is marathon, cross country, and walking. On athletics, we have track and field events. We also have other activities named indoor games. Under indoor games, we participate in table tennis, badminton, scrabble, chess, and drafts. It is also important for me to mention that Kibadi University is a center of excellence in sport. It allows learners to develop their sporting talents, to continue the games they play in secondary to a higher level. This has led to quite some achievements in this university, which I will share with you. Also, we have sports for recreational purposes. We provide learners with an opportunity to participate in aerobics and fitness programs. We participate also in dances, Zumba dance, modern dance, and salsa as a way of spending our free time, enjoying our leisure, and developing our talents in musical fitness related areas. Kibabi University will provide you with the facilities and equipments to practice. But you will have to abide with the following rules and regulations. To participate in our programs, you must be a bona fide student. You must be, you must have registered during that semester. 
you will have to get your own training kits, but for competition, we we'll provide the official university team. It is important for me to mention that Kibadi has a history of success in sports. When we first joined the Inter-University Games in 2013, we managed position 5 out of 30 universities in Kenya. We have participated in East African University with a lot of success. As we are talking, we have produced an Olympian in the name of Faith Ogal. She's going to represent the country and Kibabi University in Tokyo Olympics. We also have a success story in Benson Le Colomb Moshon, who represented Kenya in the All African University Cross Country Championships in Morocco. What am I saying? I'm saying that Kibabi University will give you an opportunity to compete nationally and internationally. Our games time starts after five and our offices are found in the sports pavilion. All of you are welcome. There's something very important that I don't want to miss out. Internally, we have soccer teams that play our internal league. These teams come in various names, Unity, Samba, uh, we have also Homeboys, we have Ajax. These teams are teams owned by students, managed by students. So as you join the university, you are free to join any of the teams and help build your sporting career. The university wishes you well as you pursue your academic and remember, Sports will help you go to the university with less travel. Why university games? You will continue developing your skills. Also, you will keep fit for your personal health. You will compete amongst other universities. This will give you an opportunity to travel worldwide. It will also give you an opportunity to socialize. To other students who take education, it will allow you an opportunity to learn how to officiate, to learn how to coach, and this will be an added advantage when you're seeking for employment as a student or as a teacher in Kibabi University. Thank you. You are all welcome. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Davis Riai Juma. I'm working under the Department of Sports, which is a section in the, the Student Affairs. Uh, I'm the games attendant, whereby I take care of all the equipment and facilities of our department. And also, I'm a coach. I, I coach football. So I want to give you the opportunity to welcome all the masters, to feel free to be at home. And uh, also, uh, Remember what has brought you to Kibadi University. My name is Nasongo Benson Murumba. I work at Kibadi University in the Department of Student Affairs as a senior assistant dean of students, reporting to the dean of students. Now, in the university, among other duties that have been tasked to it, one of them is coordination of wardenship. And I take this opportunity on behalf of uh, colleague wardens who are not here with me to welcome all our first years for the academic year 2020-2021 to Kibadi University. I want to assure you that you made the right choice and you are at the right place for the coming four years of your academic pursuit. Now, I coordinate, as I said earlier on, I coordinate the section of wardenship where we are eight. Uh, members uh, in total. Now, I now state that uh, wardenship is actually a service uh, offered by university uh, staff who have been uh, uh, appointed by the university management to look after the general welfare of students, especially when it comes to residency matters. In other words, in your house of residence, uh, issues will be coming up that may require uh, university uh, attention. In most cases, for those who stay out of the university, 
to discover that it is it will be the duty of the wardens uh, to come in and be able to uh, support you so that you are able to focus uh, uh, on on your academic uh, work. Now let me also state at this point that uh, uh, for those first year who will be staying within the university, the rest of the matters will be handled by the housekeeping department and uh, our host um, our host officer. But for those who will be staying outside the university, that is when wardens will have to come in. And as I said earlier on, we are eight uh, in total who have been officially appointed by the university management. Uh, that among other duties, for some of us, some of the wardens are in academic division, some in, are in administration. Uh, these officers are picked from across the board based on their experience and also based on their passion and their commitment to address matters that are very experienced, especially in matters of residency. Around this text, at this point, that uh, around Mbadi University, we have halls of residence that are all over surrounding the university. And because of the vastness of, this, of those uh, areas of residency, we came up with a system where we divided. We did some kind of zoning and came up with the four zones for the purpose of ease of coordination and also ease of um, service delivery to our dear students who stay outside the, the university. Now, uh, I wish at this stage to state that, uh, that uh, those four zones are as follows. One, we have a zone referred to as 2TA zone. 2TA zone lies on the eastern part of the university, so all hostels that are found in that region uh, fall under what's called 2TA zone. We have a center, just uh, those of the university called 2T, so actually the name of the zone was borrowed from the name of, this, of the center, part of the market center. Now that zone has two, uh, has two wardens. Uh, one, we have uh, a Mrs. Margaret Wanamisi, and uh, two, myself, and I said that all my name is my Ben San Moruba. So all hostels in that zone for what to call 2TA zone, lying on the eastern part of the university. On the western part of the university, uh, we have booster zone. That building was called booster because we have a, a, a telecommunication mast, a uh, booster rather, hence uh, the name uh, booster, booster zone. So all hostels on the western part of the university fall under booster zone, and that zone has two wardens. Uh, we have uh, we have uh, Madam Roslida uh, Morocco and uh, Mr. Andainje Mulambula. Uh, the third zone is what the one we refer to as 2TB zone. Now 2TB zone uh, is a zone where we have all hostels that are that lie to the northern part of the university. With the time we discover that the northern part of the university we have institutions like Anotunga uh, Girls High School, uh, we have Akibabi uh, Diploma Teacher Training College, among others. So all hostels in that zone fall under what you call 2TB zone. And uh, in that zone we have two uh, we have two wardens. One is uh, Mr. Lusweti Cyprian Barasa, and uh, next we have a uh, Miss Nelly Masai. Now the fourth and the last zone lies to the southern part of the university. This one uh, referred to as the university zone and is under the able leadership of two wardens, one, one of the longest serving wardens uh, called Dr. Janet Nabiswa and uh, uh, assisted by uh, Mr. John Boyd. For those who have been keen, you will discover that uh, in every zone we have male and female wardens. This was not by sheer coincidence, it was well thought out because in all those uh, zones or areas we have male and female students. And the, the argument and the understanding is that there are certain cases, certain issues that might crop up that might require a male, uh, a male warden or a female warden as the case may be. So, Feel very free uh, to liaise with those particular um, those particular uh, wardens, especially if you find yourself 
uh, stay out of university. Uh, allow me to state it here now that uh, in most cases we are we discourage first year from staying outside the university. We wish that they stay within the university for at least one academic year for them to acquire and excel in university life and also be able to have time to understand the university surroundings and the community around for them to be able to make an informed choice of when, of when and where to stay uh, when they enter year two. Because every, every year, first year, we encourage them to stay within the university. Uh, as the second years who are in the university the previous year uh, uh, transit as a community. But a time comes when we have maybe so many first years reporting uh, whose numbers should be over and above our hostels that we, that we have. So should you find yourself one of those uh, who will be staying out of the university within the first year, then our office will be very handy uh, in supporting uh, uh, and, 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 and be able uh, and providing you the guidelines and uh, the, 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 uh, the assurance of securing a hostel, a hostel uh, out there. Now, um, and I'll be also to state at this stage that apart from uh, the wardens, uh, every zone also has two landlord representatives. Again, we ensure that we have male and female. Uh, landlord representatives. So to the A has two landlord representatives, same to, to, to B, same to booster zone, and the same to the university, um, university zone. In addition, to ensure that the comrades or the students who are staying within those, uh, within those zones uh, are at peace and are free to share their issues, uh, we also ensure that uh, we have a student leader from the from from SOCU. SOCU stands for Students Organization of Babi University, uh, related as SOCU. So we out of the leadership of SOCU, and there are 25 leaders in total, uh, every zone again gets one one SOCU leader. And he or she must live in that particular zone. Uh, that that way uh, comrades are free to be able to even approach that leader. Uh, on matters that will be coming up in as far as the issues are concerned. And through that leadership, uh, and also through the landlord representatives, uh, those issues also reach as wardens, and we are able to share uh, and mitigate against uh, those issues becoming more, maybe uh, more, um, uh, more problematic for the students, as the case may be. Oh, in addition, it's also important that I mention it here, that uh, it will not be the duty of the of the wardens or landlord reps or the SOCU leader to identify a hostel for you. When your time comes to leave the university uh, hall of residence and stay out there, we believe that you will have had enough, you will have, had, you will have made enough acquaintances, you will have made enough a friendship with fellow comrades, your fellow, uh, your fellow senior comrades, as it were, so that they are able to guide you well on which uh, hostel or which zone uh, maybe you would better uh, stay in. Now we always guide that for you to identify uh, a good hostel out in the community, it's important that you bear in mind the following factors. One, we advise that uh, the hostel must be accessible. In other words, there must be a road, uh, a maram road, a road that can easily be used by, by, by a van or by a vehicle uh, to, to get there, just in just the event of uh, an issue coming up that requires that a vehicle they, uh, they have to uh, to reach you. Two, the hostel must be well secure, must, must be well secured. In other words, we're talking about security and safety. We really we really work hard to ensure that the welfare of our students are more so the security of our students is actually guaranteed and therefore it's also upon you to ensure that the hotel you are going to stay in is well secured, there must be a hedge around it, uh, there must be a gate, uh, the doors must be must be, must be uh, grill doors um, among others so that uh, uh, you don't fall into prey to people who are prone to, uh, to, 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 to either uh, accessing the property or even reaching you as, as the case may be. Also, ensure that there is a availability of water 
in that particular hope. You are aware that the water is life. Uh, and uh, we strongly advise that uh, don't go to a hostel where there are no provisions uh, for water, either rain protection water, rain protected water, or a borehole. Um, there should also be good supply of, of power or electricity, because at the end of the day, you need to study and be able to improve your grades. So if you go to a hostel that has no uh, power supply, it's possible that then you will not be able to uh, to, to, to achieve your core business in a university, which is academic excellence. Um, also, we advise that uh, you look, look for a hostel that, uh, that, uh, that, that the rent, that, that the rent charge is, is, is commensurate with your, with your, maybe what your parents are able to, are able to, to raise. Because at the end of the day, it's your parents or your guardians who will be responsible for your fee, for your fee payment. And therefore, uh, don't easily be, be viewed or swayed to stay in a hostel that's either too expensive for you and therefore end up having uh, having uh, rental issues uh, with it, the landlord or the caretaker, uh, as the case may be. We also advise that that hostel that you'll be choosing to go to stay, uh, to stay in should be identifiable. In other words, it must have a name. We have had situations elsewhere where hostels are nameless, if I may use that word. We encourage that uh, the hostel must be named, it must be numbered. If it's Malaika hostel, it must be Malaika hostel, well labeled, well, well accessed, um, among others. Uh, that way, if an issue uh, happened, and we, we know that there's a problem at Mamlaka hostel, or Malaika hostel, we are easily able, we are, it's easy for us to identify uh, where it is and be able to reach out uh, to support you uh, as the case may be. Therefore, don't go to a hostel that has no name, uh, has, no, has no number, and is like it's in the middle of nowhere. Ensure that you choose wisely because at the end of the day, your safety and security is also dependent on the name and location um, uh, of your hostel. Now, in matters, in matters of security, we have been blessed that uh, we have two security centers within the university community. Uh, we have an administration police center at a, at a center called the Tucci, uh, where we have a number of uh, administration police officers. Uh, so in the event of any security uh, issue, then uh, you are free uh, to, to, to get there. You also have, uh, we also have a police post uh, stretched around the booster, within booster zone. So again, um, in the event of any security uh, challenge, uh, I know there are not as many as, uh, uh, as, as exist elsewhere, but in the event of any, because it's a community, then again, uh, you will easily be supported. We want to thank the government uh, for ensuring that we have those two facilities uh, to provide security, and of, of course, to assure you is that they also work very close to the university security, so that uh, the welfare of accidents in as far as in, in as far as matter of security are concerned, uh, is well um, uh, taken care of. So um, I just wish to, on behalf of my colleagues, uh, my colleagues, uh, uh, widens, I want to wish you the very best as you commence your four-year program. If you are doing a degree program, or if you are doing a diploma or certificate program, again, as you commence your academic journey, uh, I know that you cannot pursue academic work without matters of residency. And we are committed to ensuring that we provide the right guide and the right guideline and guidance as it were in as far as residency matters are concerned. And we also want to ensure that uh, you live harmoniously with your landlords, with your care, with your caretakers, with your colleagues, if you will be staying more than one in a uh, in a room, and also with fellow comrades, maybe on the block where you'll be staying. So feel most welcome. I want to wish you the very best as you commence your academic journey in Babi University. Thank you. God bless you. I'm Reverend Joseph Kibitali Chombe. I work in Babi University under the Student Affairs Department, where I'm in charge of chaplain's services within Babi University. Babi University has uh, Chaplain Sabbath is very robust to ensure that our students and even the staff uh, get 
the spiritual nourishment and spiritual mentorship. We are so much concerned of the welfare of our students in terms of spirituality, psychological and social development. That is very key in terms of instilling values and disciplines and habits that can be able to enhance an enabling learning environment to ensure that we have students who are well equipped and all around can be able to serve within our communities, our society, and even the world at large. Uh, chaplaincy deals with the coordination and supervision of religious societies that are registered in Kibati University. And this is here to ensure that there is harmonious uh, uh, functioning of those activities and also to ensure that the students understand various religious societies that exist and faith so that we can be able to see that each one of us we can be able to work together and coexist without extremism, without narrowness in terms of our faith and renowned denomination, understanding that there are other faith. <clears throat> but at the same time, as you understand a broad understanding of spirituality, you are able to narrow down on the individual religion or denomination and enhance it for your good and benefiting of others. In the Kibabi University, we have uh, two faiths, majorly. We have Muslim faith and Christian faith. And under Christian faith, we have uh, four groupings. The first group is the uh, Protestant uh, denominations or churches, whereby we have the Christian Union that is an umbrella of all the mainstream churches that are Protestant and also evangelical in nature. And therefore, all those denominations, we group them together under Christian Union. The second group is the Catholic community, those ones who come here and want to choose to be Catholics, they're given opportunity to worship their God freely. Uh, the third group under the Christian faith, we have the Seventh-day Adventists. These are people who worship or believers who worship on the Saturday, and we give them an opportunity to worship their God, uh, observing the Sabbath as a holy day. Uh, we have the fourth group under Christian faith, that is the King's Outreach, that is a recent maybe nomination, but we have seen that within our university we give them space also to exercise the unique faith. Uh, so you see that in Kibabi University we have all those um, five, or rather two faiths, and the Muslim remaining single, but the Christian faith divided into those four denominations or those groups. <coughs> uh, we want to say that uh, as a university or as a students come to Kibati University, it's very important that you get identified with one of those religious groups where maybe you come from home being a worshiper of that particular faith. When you come to Kibati University, we have given that room and a chance to worship your God freely. And if maybe you have come from a background that maybe you have not developed your spiritual life, we give an opportunity to discover uh, that there is God who created the heaven and the universe and who controls everything. As much as you come to study to get the knowledge and other skills that will help you in life, understand that everything finally rests in the hands of God. We say that um, without God, we cannot do much because it's Him who created us and He has. Uh, everything or the manual and our destiny. Therefore, when we get connected to God and nurture that faith, we are able to become responsible, successful uh, citizens and even nationals who can be able to serve our nations or the world. Uh, more so apart from that uh, uh, issue of uh, spiritual nourishment, we also give students opportunity for spiritual mentorship. This one we talk about, we decide we equip every believer in that particular faith to be good, to grow, to become mature. We discover their gifts and be able to serve. We have leadership that is 
well equipped. We train them annually to ensure that they have the necessary skills and also ability to lead and mentor the rest of the students who are identified with their religious groups. Therefore, I want to say that Kibabi University is the best choice and the best place that you will come and get freedom to worship your God as it is enshrined in our Constitution 2010, Chapter uh, 4, uh, the Underpeel of Rights. Uh, in conclusion, I want to say is that um, uh, we are concerned with the issues of coordination and supervision, uh, given that we have various religious societies. And some of you, when you come from home, you have full inclination of extremism about your religion. But here, as much as we expose you to a variety, we, we ensure that at least you understand and appreciate that others exist for the purpose of cohesion, for the purpose of coexisting, and for the purpose of appreciating that other people exist and have different dimensions, different dimensions of who how they want to understand it without God, how they want to worship without God. So I want to say that uh, at that juncture, it's important that you are given opportunity to worship your God, discover Him, worship Him, and be able to develop the talents and the giftings you have that respect the faith of others. So we exist to ensure that there is smooth coordination and um, there is smooth running of those activities to ensure that our students are well developed. Most of the religious societies is very important in terms of social uh, helping. Uh, when you identify yourself a religious society, in time of need, that one becomes your spiritual and social family that will stand with you in the time of opportunity and in the time of challenge. So it is very important to come around and ensure that apart from entering other cool things, you identify a spiritual group or a denomination to join so they can find people can be able to share with them their life experiences, their religion, challenges, opportunities, and it will be very good. Uh, and the chaplains will also offer the spiritual counseling. I'm um, personal, I'm also um, a professional counseling psychologist, also doing counseling. We ensure that we will also give our students our spiritual guidance. Another spiritual counsel, guidance or counseling that we ensure that at least we understand the cause of the problem. And from there, we apply the holy book of your religious faith to mitigate your problem. We don't rush into saying a demon where there's no demon. We don't lay hands on where it doesn't require hands. We don't, uh, you know, we must understand because some problems are just uh, normal. Others are biological in nature, others are medical in nature, others are psychological in nature, others are spiritual in nature, others are financial. You know, so we must diagnose to know what is exactly the problem and how do we bring in the spiritual truth of your religious faith to ensure that you navigate through that. And therefore, we have uh, also the patrons and the matron, uh, matrons who assist us. These are people, the members of staff, teaching and teaching staff who are uh, uh, committed members in those religious groups and have some experience and knowledge on the doctrine of that particular faith. Therefore, they are there to ensure that uh, they give the student leadership and the student community the right direction and the right counsel in time of child. So I want to say welcome. We are there for you. And it's a good moment when we interact with you uh, while we are in Kibabi University for the rest of the period as a student. God bless you.